Welcome back. Now we will try to understand about uh, satellite systems, techniques and uses. First we have communication satellites. You know, these are meant for the purpose of communication. You know, the Indian National Satellite Inset System is one of the largest domestic communication satellite systems in Asia Pacific region, uh, which has about nine operational communication satellites placed in geostationary orbit as these are not Earth observation satellites. These are placed at a at an altitude of 35,800 kilometers uh, above the surface of the earth. This was established in 1983 with the commissioning of INSAT 1B. Then we had a constellation of many satellites like INSAT 3A, 3C, 4A, 4B, GSAT 6 and uh, like that GSAT 7, 8, 9 and up to 11. Now. Uh, uh, you know, inset system uh, has uh, more than 200 uh, transponders in C uh, band, uh, extended C and KU band. These are the different kinds of bands pertaining to different wavelengths, which uh, cater to the services like telecommunications, like your television uh, broadcasting, like satellite news gathering, societal applications, weather forecasting, disaster warning and search and rescue operations these are the applications of these communication satellites which we talked about just now then we have earth observation satellites now globally talking about the uh, first mission uh, that was uh, carried out in the series of earth observation satellites was uh, landsat missions by usa in 1972 you know, this is the time series Landsat 1 in uh, July 1972 and it, uh, you know, lasted till January 1978 like we have Landsat 2 and we had, we had, then we had Landsat 3, then we had Landsat 4, land, Landsat 5, 6, 7, 8 and latest was launched in 2020 that was Landsat 9. Now, uh, Landsat 5 uh, was uh, launched in, 90, in uh, 1984. Uh, it became Guinea's world record for longest operating Earth's observation satellite. You can see 5, it has, uh, you know, remained there operational for from 1984 to January 2013. Pretty long time. Then Landsat 6 failed to, uh, you know, achieve orbit. It, it was a failure and Landsat 7 successfully launched in 1999 along with Landsat 8 which uh, launched into 2013 continues to provide daily global data and Landsat 7, 9 was the recent uh, addition to the series. Then we have uh, what are the different specifications of Landsat 8 ha is having an operational land imager and th th thermal infrared sensor. Uh, it has, you know, you can see 11 bands from 1, 2, 3, 4 and particular to different wavelengths uh, like blue, green, red, near infrared, short wave infrared, short wave infrared to panchromatic which is uh, black and white, cirrus for uh, the cloud uh, contamination, detection of cloud contamination, thermal infrared sensor 2, thermal infrared sensor uh, 1 and 2 and these all these per pertain to their particular set of wavelengths you can see and this is they are used you know these all these wavelengths uh, you know are utilized for discrimination of the particular things to which they respond like red discriminates vegetation slopes and infrared we know emphasizes biomass content and shorelines Short wave infrared dis discriminates moisture content of soil and vegetation, penetrates thin clouds, and uh, like you know, that blue is uh, used for distinguishing soil from vegetation and deciduous from coniferous vegetation. And uh, this band one is used for coastal and aerosol studies. So likewise, we have a Landsat four thematic mapper and Landsat seven enhanced thematic mapper, which had bands one two three four up to eight but uh, you know corresponding to uh, particular set of wavelengths having usefulness in mapping for different kinds of you know things related to vegetation related to soil related to um, you know uh, geology and landsat one to five 
मल्टी स्पेक्ट्रल सेंसर लैंड साइड वन टू एंड थ्री हेड स्पेक्ट्रल बैंड बैंड फोर बैंड फाइव बैंड सिक्स एंड बैंड सेवन एंड टॉकिंग अबाउट लैंड साइड एम एस एस फोर एंड फाइव इट एट बैंड वन ग्रीन बैंड टू रेड बैंड थ्री नियर एंड फेर एंड बैंड फोर नियर एंड फेर एंड दीज आर द सेट ऑफ वेव लेंथ दैट पर्टेन टू दीज ग्रीन रेड नियर एंड नियर एंड फेर एड एंड दिस इज द यूजफुलनेस इन मैपिंग यू कैन सी हेयर वेजिटेशन यू नो यू कैन सी हेयर वेजिटेशन बाउंड्री वाटर लैंड एंड लैंड फॉर्म्स now indian uh, remote sensing uh, satellites earth observation satellites that uh, satellites uh, among them is one uh, irs 1c satellite this is one of the best satellites having highest spatial resolution of 5.8 meter but in panchromatic black and white uh, image and 23.5 meter resolution in multi spectral image it was launched in uh, 1995 at an altitude of 1800 Uh, 17 kilometer, and uh, you can see it. It is. It has a repetitivity, temporal resolution of 25 four days. So we get an image of the same of uh, same uh, area after a period of 24 days. Now it has three sensors, namely panchromatic, LIS3, and WIFA. So what are the uses of this uh, this uh, data in this uh, provided by this satellite? so it is it has usefulness in mapping geological and geomorphological features especially the panchromatic region pan this one this pan data and high spatial resolution is useful for which is list 3 you can say is useful for urban planning studies detecting urban fringe growth and uh, updating the urban transportation infrastructure uh, etc and uh, wide field sensor it also has uh, some applications in vegetation and oceans now list 3 sensor some brief characteristics of list 3 sensor uh, you can see about spectral bands and uh, their uh, wavelengths it has a resolution of 23.5 meter and it has ccd uh, ccd swat it uh, elements it has a swat swat means the area which it captures on the earth uh, 141 uh, kilometers now it has band 2 band 3 band 4 band 5 you can see band 2 uh, is centered around the first peak of the vegetation reflectance curve which we will talk ab uh, about in the coming slides and band 3 has is centered around chlor chlorophyll absorption it's good in absorbing chlorophyll band 3 means uh, that uh, wavelength range and band band 4 has high reflectance plateau region of vegetation reflectance it uh band shows high reflectivity reflectance or healthy vegetation and is useful for green biomass estimation using band 4 we can estimate green biomass so uh, band 5 pertains to middle infrared region uh, from this to this wavelength microns and it has a major application it it can help you discriminate between crop types between canopy water status forest type separation and damage assessment these are the specifications about pan it has band wavelength of 0.5 to 0.75 microns resolution very high resolution 5.8 meter and uh, uh, you know it has a, a focal length of 980 mm and these are some of the other characteristics about this pan sensor and wide field wide field sensor it's it's a very really, uh, low resolution uh, it has a resolution of 188 meters and it has a swath of swath means the area it is able to capture on the uh, globe is 770 with a high repetitivity after 5 days the same uh, you know uh, image of the particular area will be available only after a period of 5 days again so it can help you in crop condition and drought assessment of crop condition and drought monitoring